All right, so what I'm going to share about this is um, turning experience into action. I'm going to incorporate a lot of personal examples from myself as well as some examples from what I hear when I talk to students around the country. And to start off, I'm going to talk a little bit about me and what drives me and other students, so a little bit about my past and um, what has driven me to really join the causes that I'm a part of now. Next, I'm going to talk about what experiences mean, and that's taking all of the amazing research that people like Dr. Escalash have done and going beyond the numbers and seeing exactly how this goes in school. Also, uh, next would be what goes wrong. So taking programs that already exist in the country and improving them. Then we'll talk about what's being done. So some student ideas that are currently going on or student programs and developing them and making them be our bullying programs. Also, uh, for the last topic, uh, how we get there. So personal takeaways for the future. Next slide, please. So a little bit about me, what I'm currently doing. Um, I serve as a regional facilitator and a national speaker for the Anti-Defamation League, which was originally created as an organization to combat anti-Semitism, but now combats various forms of bullying and harassment around the world, and specifically has a World of Difference Institute to focus on K-12 schools. I also serve as the co-chair of the National Advisory Council, as well as the chair of the Northern Virginia chapter, of the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network, which is an education organization for K through 12 students and sponsors Gay Straight Alliances throughout the country, as well as events like the Day of Silence and Ally Week, which is coming up in a few weeks. And then, of course, personal background, I am currently a junior at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C., and I'm pursuing a major in Integrated Information Science and Technology. Next slide. So a little bit about my past and what drove me to do what I'm doing now, um, and that would be that unfortunately I was bullied severely in elementary school for being Jewish, short, and for being intelligent. Now, living in a conservative area, a roughly conservative area, um, I did hear a lot of anti-Semitic comments in high school and throughout my school career as well. And as a result of this bullying and victimization, I did see a severe drop in academic performance. I was depressed for several, year, for several years, and also I was suicidal for several years as a result of everything that was going on for me. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so now a little bit about experiences. Um, so what do experiences mean? As far as students go when they're impressionable and learning everything about themselves, they can do a lot have different types of experiences in school, so it can drive things like self-image, it can dictate what and how students do what they do, it can dictate how they interact, it can drive us as adults and supporters to be better, it can drive students themselves to be better, and it can seriously help the world if we see positive experiences. Next slide. So self-image, uh, experiences drive a lot with self-image, and when somebody gives a negative experience or when somebody has a neg negative experience, it can be something immediate, life-changing. And it's superficial, constant, generally, you constantly hear things about your self-image and it could constantly be breaking you down, whether somebody's making a comment or not. It's easy and it can be influenced by one person. So whereas other forms of victimization and other experiences can be or have to be driven by a lot of people, Somebody can make one negative comment about your appearance and it can really destroy your self-image. Next slide. Um, so experiences can dictate what students do. It can dictate the clubs that they join in school, the leadership positions that they hold, their out-of-school activities, their relationship with their parents, and if they have a significant amount of negative experiences, what we see is that it can drive substance abuse as well as um, a continuation of illegal activities. It can dictate how students do. So I mentioned this as something personal for me before. Um, it can dictate how their grades are, whether they drop or get higher based on their experiences. It can dictate the job that they hold, how their social life is, their mental health, the current positions that they hold within the world, whether they're seen as, quote, unquote, a member of good standing, whether people like them and get along with them. And also, very importantly, it can dictate their position as a family member. Next slide to dictate how students interact. And I think the picture really kind of says it all here. Um, a really important relationship during a child's development is between their, with their parents. 
um, and a negative experience at school when you don't want to listen to your peers. Um, they could really turn off from their parents as well. You can stop listening to your parents, and overall, this can cause a negative impact to student-student relationships, also student-teacher relationships, and at worst, it can cause a negative relationship with yourself, which can include self-harm and depression and a variety of other things. That's fine. <clears throat> so positive experiences can drive adults to be better. And with this, we see better interaction between adults and other adults as well as adults and students, higher awareness amongst adults, a broader approach when we deal with things like bullying and harassment, more effective approaches, we're more willing to help out and support students on a variety of issues, and overall, as adults and as students, we see a happier environment. Next slide. <clears throat> also, it can drive students to be better. So I decided to take this picture of Zach Walls from the Democratic Convention, which was a few weeks ago. And in that, we saw Zach, who is a young American, speaking about his two lesbian parents, which for me, sitting there watching TV was completely motivating. And this kind of thing is what we see motivate students when they see their fellow peers in leadership positions, it can lead to more positive experiences in school. So with that comes higher graduation rates, more college success, better jobs that the students are holding. We see more student achievement, more leaders amongst the students, and very importantly, we see more student voices at the table for a variety of things. Next one. And last but not least, it can certainly help the world. When we see positive experiences around the world, especially in schools, we improve our quality of living. So we see a better economy with that because people are driven to hold higher jobs and do more, happier people, a better global relationship, especially with the Internet now and victimization, as was mentioned before, can happen on the Internet. The Internet is a lot safer. We'll see better relationships amongst people throughout the world. Also, leading by example, where we see students and adults alike leading by example and the United States being a, a beacon, really of hope as it was before. And also we see more leadership among students and more intervention when issues of bullying and other issues of victimization occur. Next slide. So now a little bit about what goes wrong. Um, so there are a lot of programs out there. As Dr. Esplage mentioned, she has some benchmarks for ones that work really well, and then also there are some that don't work as well. And what we see that goes wrong in a lot of those that don't work quite as well are that student experiences are ignored. There's just a one-sided approach completely to the issue of bullying. Uh, generalization of students, tokenizing of one student or a couple of students, labeling of a student's issue, suppression of their voice, dramatization of the actual problem, and then adultism between both adults and students. Next slide. <clears throat> so as far as examples go, um, bullying lectures, where students are basically herded into a classroom or in an assembly, hear a lecture that ultimately amounts to bullying is very, very bad, and that's about it. Also, unilateral bullying policies that are bullying policies for across the board. So no matter what happens, it's treated the exact same way with the same discipline. Also, idea sheets, where instead of actually going through a program, students are just handed ideas of how to deal with bullying. Um, one student voice, so tokenizing of one student, where this one person within the school community is expected to speak for all of the students in the community. Also, targeted bullying programs where a school may just have a bullying program directed at LGBT students or high-risk populations when really it could be a school-wide problem. Also, self-harm where um, we see students, because their voices are suppressed or they think that nobody cares, that can lead to self-harm for the student. And then for dramatization, when there's an automatic link to suicide, so if they talk to a guidance counselor and they say that they're depressed or being bullied, the guidance counselor immediately thinks, or whoever it is within the school immediately wants to link that to suicide, and that can lead to even more self-harm for the student. And then um, lastly, the counselor, oh, can you go back for a second? Thank you. Um, and lastly, the counselor knows best mentality, where no matter what student comes in there with that experience, it's kind of like a scripted answer, where the counselor really knows what's best for the student, and they discount whatever the student believes. Next slide. 